Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain out of that 2023 subscribe button so we can climb even further beyond the 1K ladder. Come on, you know you can hit that subscribe and like button. You can go ahead and hit that bell, too, while you're doing all that. I really do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate each and every single one of you. I truly do mean it. And, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, there's several cards in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! that I just love that are near and dear to my heart. The Silvory Calcos is one of them. The Sacred Beasts are kind of cool, but the Egyptian freaking God cards are definitely my number one, especially Slife of the Sky Dragon. Just, it's it's a badass like Vin Diesel. You know what I'm saying? And uh, there's a TCG player writer uh, on uh, named Lucas Peterson. I believe his name is, if I could speak tonight. And uh, he ended up posting three deck profiles, uh, one for each of the Egyptian gods. And I figured I would put them together and put them on here and, you know, just kind of have an idea of, you know, where to take the god cards now that we're in 2023. You know, it's something that, you know, we can look at from year to year and as time goes on throughout Yu-Gi-Oh! and see, you know, hey, do the god cards actually stand a chance? Fun fact the God cards have been played in the past in actual meta decks. Uh, what comes to mind for me is Dragon Rulers back in 2013. For a very short time, Dragon Ruler players were actually playing one copy of Obelisk because you could easily special summon out three dragons and tribute all three for Obelisk. And the opponent can't respond to the summon. The summon can't be negated. Cards and effects can't be activated when he's summoned. And neither player can target it with card effects. So... Even though that wasn't very consistent, it was a great out to the Dragon Rulers because, you know, Blaster targets, so you can't pop the Obelisk. And so then, for a time, Dragon Ruler players were also playing number 7 Lucky Straight to be able to get around the Obelisk. Didn't last very long, wasn't all that consistent, but it is very interesting to see. Also, shout out to my homie Brian. I remember years ago in Zodiac Tier 0 format, he was playing a copy of Obelisk in his Zodiac deck because why not, I guess? <laughs> it's... It is what it is. It's hilarious. But I want to show you off three deck profiles, one each for the Egyptian gods. And so we're going to start with Fist of Fate, me daddy, with Obelisk the Tormentor. So we got your, of course, your three Obelisk. It's, uh, you know, pretty standard. Neither player can target it with card effects. It's arguably the best god card out of the bunch. Uh, once per turn during the end phase, if he special summons, send it to the grave. All three god cards have that effect. And then you contribute two monsters to pop all monsters the opponent controls, and then it can't declare an attack to turn this effect's activated. Whatever. We're playing three copies of Guardian Slime because it's literally Egyptian God card support. And whenever it's sent from the hand or field to the grave, you can add a spell or trap from your deck to your hand that lists the Winged Dragon of Ra in its text, um, which in turn, basically, if any of the God card support down the line mentions, like, even just Ra, then you can play Guardian Slime with, like, other God cards to get that support to, you know, help benefit them. Uh, but it's a pretty decent card overall. Helps you get to uh, Egyptian God Slime. Uh, three Raw's Disciple, because it lets you get out two more. Uh, we're playing three copies of Reactor Slime, three copies of Tellus Little Angel, three copies of Angel 01, one copy of DD Crow. Um, to be honest, I'm not really sure why Lucas Peterson's only playing one copy of DD Crow. But uh, I guess you could say that it's because this is a going second deck. Uh, three Lightning Storm, one Feather Duster, two Desires, because you want to get your cards ASAP. One Terraforming, one Monster Born, three Soul Crossing, because it's broken AF. Two copies of Fist of Fate, uh, two copies of the Breaking Ruin God, two copies of Mound of the Bound. Uh, it's it's honestly really good Egyptian God field spell support. Uh, three Soul Energy Max, and then one Metal Reflect Slime to get to your God Slime. So God Slime requires one Aqua Monster plus one level 10 Water Monster. Must be either Fusion Summon or Special Summon from the Extra Deck by tributing one level 10 Aqua Monster with zero attack. Well, hey, would you look at that? Guardian Slime is a level 10 zero attack Aqua Monster. Same for Reflect Slime. Uh, this card can be treated as one or three tributes for the tribute summon of a monster. Cannot be destroyed by battle. Your opponent's monsters cannot target for attacks, and your opponent cannot target with card effects any monsters you control except God Slime. This is just to help facilitate plays to getting into an Egyptian god. Uh, one Zeus, one Nightingale, one Blue Robin, one Skulldred, a little nightmare package of Unicorn, Phoenix, and Cerberus, one Masquerina, one Cross Sheep, one Mirage Light, one Link Karibo, and two all Mirage, wrapping up our Obelisk deck profile. You know, it's it's interesting to see how the deck functions. Um, <laughs> I mean, this isn't the best of hands, but I mean, you're trying to OTK with Obelisk. So I feel like your main end goal is to go second and break boards of Lightning Storm and use Soul Crossing to suck up the opponent's monsters, which honestly, if you're going against tier, they're probably going to end on more than three monsters. So that's 
pretty helpful. Next up, we have Chickadee China, the Chinese chicken. Shout out to my friend uh, Raymond. Years and years ago, YCS Orlando in 2010, I remember him telling me about that. I don't know what TV show that's from. Uh, so this build plays, of course, the big old chicken nugget himself uh, with three uh, sphere mode testicles with three raw and then the one immortal phoenix um, because, I mean, it is technically raw and it is actually kind of good in a pure raw deck. So we're playing one immortal phoenix, two guardian slime, three raw, three testicle, uh, three Sharon. Yes, we are playing a tier element package. Don't instantly click off. The reason why you are playing this in a god card deck is because of the fact that, honestly, the tier element cards are so damn good at being able to mill and facilitate plays, getting you to what you need to get to. You know, going into a kick Kalos and then into a rule Kalos to establish monsters, high attack monsters that can help boost up Raw's attack off of the Ancient Chant is really good. And it's also just free extenders. Like, even though tier element is tier zero and we're in a tier zero format, if something is very good like why would you not play that in a deck where you're already kind of handicapping yourself by playing an egyptian god card so i'm sorry if you don't want to see tier elements in this deck but like i understand why lucas peterson is playing because these these cards are just too fucking disgusting we're playing three copies of reactor slime a uh, one Meryl, two dark beckoning beast with three dd crow and one chaos summoning beast along with the three opening of the spirit gates you know, this package is actually kind of good, and we saw this in Sprite in the OCG. Uh, we saw some play with it here in the TCG, but it was mostly just in the OCG, just because it's a really good level 2 package, and it does put multiple monsters on the board for you to tribute off into Raw. An Ancient Chant, of course, granting you uh, that tribute summon in addition to your normal summon or set. I feel like you pretty much live or die by Ancient Chant or Soul Crossing uh, in this deck especially. Soul Crossing, obviously, in any Egyptian God card deck. But in this deck in particular, you know, you live or die by the Ancient Chant. So Ancient Chant, you add a copy of Raw from your deck or grave to your hand. And if you do, you can tribute summon one monster during your main phase this turn in addition to your normal summoner set. And you can only gain this effect once per turn. You can banish this card from your grave. And if you tribute summon Raw this turn, its original attack and defense become the combined original attack and defense of the monsters tributed for its summon. You can only activate one Ancient Chant per turn. Um, so basically, it'll gain attack based upon the attack and defense of the monsters, plus however many life points you pay. Uh, one Foolish to Dump Raw, one Monster Born, one Blaze Cannon. This card's actually pretty good, too. Um, this card is also always treated as a Blaze Accelerator card, because why not? Uh, one, the Wing Dragon Raw you control gains the following effects till the end of this turn. This card's activation effect cannot be negated. This card is unaffected by your opponent's card effects. When attack is declared involving this card, you can tribute any number of other monsters that did not declare an attack this turn. This card gains attack equal to the tributed monster's combined original attack till the end of this turn. Just more OTK fodder for Raw. And then after damage calculation, if this card attacked, you can send all monsters your opponent controls to the graveyard, because why not? Three Soul Crossing, because it's good. Uh, three, the True Sun God. When this card's activated, what do you get to do? You get to add Raw or a card that mentions it from your deck to your hand, except uh, the True Sun God. Monsters except Raw cannot attack the turn their special summon. Once per turn during your main phase, you can send this card from the field or one Winged Dragon of Raw Mortal Phoenix from your deck to the grave. Then send one Winged Dragon of Raw from your monster zone to the grave. You can only activate one Sun God per turn. I mean, take a shot every time we've said Winged Dragon of Raw. This goes to show how good the Raw support is. Like... They need this kind of support for the other two god cards. One Millennium Revelation, three Spirit Gates, one Reflect Slime, and then one copy of one with the Sun God. Uh, two Egyptian God Slime, one Tear Element Kaleido Heart, one Rue Kalos, and one Kit Kalos. One Zeus, one Gustav Max, one Ravenous Tarantula, one Dugaris, one Access Code, one Apollosa, one Unicorn, one Cross Sheep with one Link Karibo, and one Anima. Wrapping up what I honestly think is the best of the other of all three of the god card decks. I feel like Raw is going to be your, your best go-to if you want to play a pure build. Next up, we are playing a what that second mouth do. <laughs> so this is my favorite Egyptian god. And uh, when I say you live or die by the revived sky god, you live or die by this fucking trap card. Like, if you ain't getting this trap card off, you're probably losing the ball game. Like I said, yeah, your, your best bet if you want to play the Egyptian gods is to probably play the raw build. But we are using the Numerons because, I mean, getting out four monsters is disgusting and it just instantly gets you to raw. So we're playing three raw, three lava golem because we've got to break boards somehow. Three pathfinder with three Numeron wall. Two pot of desires with three avarice. One terraforming, three calling, one foolish, one monster born. Three memories of hope because drawing cards is good AF. Three soul crossing. Gee, I wonder why. Three Numeron Network, and then two Peaceful Burial. So you send a monster from your deck to the grave, but for the rest of this turn, you can activate cards of the effects of cards with the same name that sent monster had in the grave. You pretty much just use this to dump Slifer. 
And then you use, uh, of course, the Revive Sky God. So the activation of this card or its effects cannot be negated, nor can its effects be negated. You special summon one Slifer from your grave. Then each player draws until they have six cards in their hand. You can banish this card from your grave, place a monster born from your deck or grave on top of your deck. Then if a Divine Beast monster is in your grave, you get to draw another card. And of course, you can only use each effect once per turn. Yeah, the, this card's disgusting. Three Trap Trick. And then for the extra deck, one Zeus, one Gustav, one Sunya, uh, and then two each of the small ones, two number four, two number one, two number two, and two number threes. It's not like I'm making a McDonald's order. One uh, God, uh, Underworld Goddess, one Apollosa, one Megaclops, and of course one Unicorn. One thing that I do want to mention with all three of these decks, because I feel like the TCG Player Writer articles, uh, article writers aren't allowed to mention stuff in the OCG. I don't really know why. Um... But keep in mind that in Photon Hypernova, we're getting triple tactic tasking, which can help you search normal spells and traps. So, like, if you're trying to get to something like Memories of Hope, you can. You just can't play it that turn, which is a big downside. Or you can get, like, Monster Born to your hand for the next turn. Um, and then, of course, we have the Time Rending Morganite. I've already talked about this card. This card, I feel like, helps Egyptian God decks, like, a bunch. Like, you can't tell me that drawing two cards every turn instead of one is not good and being able to conduct up to two normal summons or sets each turn not just one that is insane for being able to establish monsters on the board in order to summon your egyptian god cards so keep that in mind if you do build like any of these decks try out triple tactic tasking and or time rending morganite because i mean tasking can get you to morganite because it's a normal spell but i feel like morganite is just going to be such a disgusting card when we get it here in the tcg and cyberstorm access in like four months um, you know, like I said, that, that double summon effect is really what I think gives the Egyptian gods like a much needed boost. Are they tier one or anything? Fuck no. This deck will never be tier one in any of its existence unless like Konami just throws all of the snack packs at the wall and gives Egyptian gods like the most broken AF support that we've ever seen. Like it has to be like honestly Winged Dragon of Raw level support plus 10 like wing dragon of raw like just just straight wing dragon of raw decks are on the right track but they still need more support to get there we also need the creator god of light Heracity, which is still only in the ocg um we need to get that over here in the tcg so guys let me know what you think about these three decks i figured i would do three deck profiles instead of just one thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video